Hi, I'm Paul Roberts, Conscious Counseling 101. Do we judge people by the types of cars they drive? Are we judging them by the types of ways they work their life? Uh, should we be doing that kind of thing? I don't think so. There's all kinds of people around us. They all have different circumstances. They all have different financial conditions. Like I drive a Jeep. I would love to not drive a Jeep. To, buy, to drive a more expensive, cost efficient, fuel efficient vehicle. And I used to. So let's talk about that, because here I am driving my car series. I'm driving in a Jeep. People are going, why is he driving in a Jeep, driving his daughter all the way to school every day? He's in California. Don't they have Priuses? Don't they, aren't they all listening to what Leonardo DiCaprio says up there? Well, we can't all afford to. There's a reason why I'm driving a Jeep, and I want to talk about that today, because it's about consideration of what we do and how we operate our lives. First off, I'd like to say that we used to have a Jeep back when we had plenty of money. And the Jeep failed us within three, within three year period of time. And we had to get rid of it. It had electrical problems and uh, the header cracked twice when we drove through water. And that's a four or $600 repair every single time. And I said, nah, I don't know if we can, we can have this Jeep. We can't count on it. So we got rid of it. But boy, it was a great vehicle, especially until we had the kids. We had the, we had the kids, it was a little bit difficult because we had to put the seats down, put them in their car seats and the seat mechanism wasn't in a convenient place on the side like it is now. It was down way below and you had to fish around and find it. It was it was poorly made because Jeeps weren't made to have people in the back seat. But we got rid of the Jeep and we said, well, let's see. We can't afford a high cost vehicle like this, but we got a lot of money for it. So I went ahead and bought a less expensive but newer vehicle that was cost efficient. I bought a Scion. It was a Scion XB. And it was a nice car. It was made like a tin can. The first time I put the hood down, I put it down too hard and it turned into the hood. Gee whiz. But we knew that it was a cheap vehicle. We knew it was going to be cost efficient. We knew it was going to cost, we were going to get almost 40, 40 miles to the gallon. It was so lightweight and the engine was so small and the, the windshield was so great. I could look out and I could see the whole road in front of me. It was great. I loved it. Well, unfortunately, we got rear ended. And I uh, wanted to buy the same vehicle again, but couldn't. They stopped making it. Probably because it was a tin can. It wasn't going to last. But I didn't understand that. So I got the closest vehicle I could to it. Not the new Scion XB. It was made totally different. But at that time, it was a Nissan Cube. So I got the Nissan Cube. And everything was great with that, too. It was a tin can also. A little more styling. But the transmission blew at 80,000 miles. And then I got it fixed for free. And then the transmission blew again. But even though it blew within its time, they said, oh no, I had too much miles on the vehicle. So even though I got the transmission put in, they wouldn't replace it again. So the car is a piece of junk. So I said, you know what? Even though I'm saving all kinds of money on this car, in order to have a car that runs well and efficiently, I have, and I don't have money, I have to buy the bottom of the line car that runs well and efficiently. And by buying the bottom of a line car that runs well and efficiently, I've got a car that doesn't last. It's poorly made, it's cheaply made, and they know it. But it's accepted that that's what you get when you don't spend a lot of money. So then I said to myself, ah, oh, man, I didn't want to buy a Jeep yet because I had a few more years of commuting my kids and I wanted this car to last, but it wouldn't do it. So I had an opportunity to buy a Jeep and I said, it's gonna cost me more money to buy this Jeep right now, but I have to buy a car and I'm not gonna buy a Scion and I can't buy an XB. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy the Jeep and just pay the extra money because for a few more years, I'm gonna be commuting the kids and it's gonna cost me at least $2,500 more in gas every year owning this Jeep. So to own the Jeep, it cost me $7,500 to $10,000 more, which is less than the cost of one of those cheaper cars. But when the commuting stops, it won't cost me hardly anything because they don't go hardly anywhere. So, for less than the cost of another one of those cars, I'm going to buy a car that will last. So I'll put the brakes on before the transmission blows. I'll put the brakes on before the cost of gas costs me too much. And I'll hold it back at less than the cost of buying one of these other vehicles. And sure enough, after three years, I've got a lot of miles on the Jeep and I can continue to go. And the car will continue to go, the engine will continue to go, the transmission will continue to go, the commuting will stop. I'm only 10,000 in instead of another 15,000 in and I've got the car that'll continue to last.
Right now, it's still costing me because I'm driving my daughter. But that will end, and I'll still have a car that was efficiently bought for a lower cost that I can afford that will last longer. So that's why I'm driving the Jeep. So when you see somebody buying a great big money guzzling, gas guzzling car, don't judge them. You don't know what they're thinking about. You don't know what their plight is. They might hardly ever use it. They might have a plan that takes shape in a year or two, and they wish they could have gotten there, but they couldn't put another in-between car in there that they knew would fail them, that was a waste of money. You don't know what you've got when you see somebody in a car, okay? So I wanted to put that into your heads today just to show you how different everybody's idea of what they're doing in their life is and what their house looks like and how they conduct themselves. Look at my last video about how to do unto others as you've done unto yourself and look at all the different ways that the person and themselves may do unto others because they're doing it based on what they're seeing in themselves. Look at all these distinctions we can make as we analyze what we're doing and what others are doing. And we know we can't analyze everything others are doing. We have to give them a lot of tolerance and a lot of benefit of the doubt. Even though there's a lot of people out there that have lost, you never know whether the person that you're looking at is lost or you just don't understand them. And so this is a great thing that leads us back to the principle of not judging another. Not judging another. Being aware of who you are and acting as you would want to be treated but not judging others because you don't know what their situation is. I used to come over here and drive around with my friend when I didn't live here yet, and he came out here before me, and the traffic here, here could be horrible. And he would go and talk visibly and loudly about other people that got under his skin while they were driving. And I said, Eric, you don't know what these people are thinking or what they're encountering right now at this exact moment. If you are to lash out at them with your verbal abuse, you've got to realize that you are worthy of being lashed out by others with verbal abuse. And you don't want that. You're going to get it anyway, but you don't want to be worthy of it. So you must cleanse yourself of that tactic. So we can't lash out and judge others. And one of the reasons why I talked this thing about this car is a car is a status symbol. It can be. Could be. You could see a person for their car and make judgments about them. Would you have made this judgment about me? Would you have been accurate? I'm driving a car that uses too much gas. I'm well aware of it, but it's more solidly built. It's the best car ever made of these cheaper Wranglers. The last year, the highest model. It's the best you could have of the low-end car. But I say low-end because it's a car of the past. I've got a 10-year-old computer. You're not supposed to be able to have 10-year-old computers. When I first bought computers, I had to buy them every couple of years. and Apples were expensive. Macintoshes were expensive. And then they built these aluminum ones. And I only needed it to change photographs and imagery, connect to the internet, do email, and do video. And I do most of the videos now on the phone here because there's a lip, lip sync issue because they don't have the latest codecs and software and stuff like that. And the editing of these types of videos are better on this. But if my computer does everything I need it to do if I'm willing to be patient and wait and it doesn't break. Now I know I should get up to date and get a newer computer, but then you got to do a new software, everything's got to be on the cloud, you don't really own anything anymore, and you take a step into a new world. I've been procrastinating, not wanting to take a step into that new world because I don't have trust in the man. I don't have faith in the man. I don't put my faith in the man. Jesus said not put your faith in man. One of the reasons why I do what I do is so that I can not be under man's thumb. I cannot be told what to do by man. I work for myself. I'm my own self-made person. I don't want to have to be forced to do what my boss would tell me to do when a lot of their inclinations and a lot of capitalistic uh, companies and things like this don't have good interests in mind. They just have the money. They're serving the money interest in mind. I have had to separate myself from this so that I won't be a part of that. You wouldn't know these things by looking at me, looking at my car, looking at my house. You wouldn't know these things. You wouldn't know. Like, for instance, I've got a house right now that was hard to buy. It took us a lifetime of saving and trading out houses and working on houses to be able to buy it. You wouldn't know that. You just think I have, I, that I'm doing well. I'm not doing well. I'm a steward, a, a cautious, thrifty steward that puts my elbow grease into my work. But you wouldn't know that. So this video is about... I guess really about not judging people and why. I talked about a few things, I touched on a few others. The car was a big one. 
and I'm going to call this a day for today for this Conscious Counseling video. Paul Roberts here, Conscious Counseling 101. Just another thought for the day. Talk to you soon. Give me some ideas, folks.